So there's, I, I've heard there's some discussion about the word makr, uh, which is to plot, to deceive, to trick, and then how can God say that he is plotting, or he's tricking, or he's deceiving? This word comes in Quran in two regards. One is when you deceive yourself, and God doesn't just deceive, he deceives in response to something. So for example, just to make it clear, I'm going to go over some of the verses that these um, apologetics have been using. So for example, إِذْ يَمْكُرُونَكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ When the people who denied the truth, when they were plotting against you, so they were also plotting, right? But no one's plot is above God's plot. No one's, you know, a plot is like, it's a plot when you're tricking someone, right? So, uh, when those people who denied the truth, they were plotting against you, right, to restrain you, or to kill you, or to expel you from the city. So they plotted this, and Prophet Muhammad got expelled, they tried to kill him, but in Prophet Muhammad going from Mecca to Medina, he found disciples that stood up for him and then the whole plot right that they had against prophet muhammad got turned over so that's one example allah is not deceiving but when you're deceiving you're trying to deceive against the truth then it's like a mirage you know you think it's water but when you come to it it's not it's not water it, you got deceived but it wasn't it wasn't you deceived yourself and that is the point. Another verse in regards to this issue is um, that God says in the Quran, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, it says, um, uh, Do the people of the city or the village, uh, do, and this is something very important, this, no matter what you're doing in life, you're deceiving yourself, you're deceiving others. But you should, you know, you should never think that you're above, maybe God's taking you into a trap, right? You don't know what your end fate is. You don't know what God thinks about you. So some people think that they're, you know, God's not, not watching me, I can lie. Or God's not watching me and I can steal. And God's not watching me, or maybe God doesn't know what I'm doing and I can do this. And so you better be careful that, you know, you think your deceptions, that somehow God's not watching, but it may happen that your deceptions will come back and bite you. Okay. So, Do you think you're safe from the plot of God? Everyone has a plot, right? There's the plot of life. There's a beginning and end. There's a plot. You are part of a plot, right? And do you think you're safe from the plot of God? So there's nothing here that is like, oh, God's deceiving. God doesn't want to deceive. But don't think that you can deceive God. That's the point. No one thinks they're safe from the plot of God. Satan, for example, okay, even in the, Christian, in the Christian world, he's considered an angel. He was an angel. But what happened? Something happened and he fell. This is in the Christian perspective. For the Muslims, it was a jinn. This being that worshipped God, that loved God for forever. And then his fate changed. Right? So if you, you think you're safe from what Allah has in store for you, you think you're above God, that God can't plan against you, right? So that's something. And then the other verse that was uh, discussed uh, with the apologetics um, on this issue, um, makaru, makaru, they plotted and planned wa makaru Allah. So Allah plotted and planned. Allah doesn't plot against you, but when you deceive yourself or you try to deceive the truth, then you're headed for that mirage. You know, you're, you're thinking you're headed somewhere, 
but you're going to find it out, find out it to be something else. That's what this verse means. And whenever makr is used, whenever this plot is used, it's always in contrast to someone else's plot. You know, if you're plotting against God and his prophets, right, then God has a plot too. Because it's not possible that God is going to let the plot of the bad people have more substance in the end than the good people, right? Because the, the good and the bad are not equal. And so because they're not equal, they're going to have different results. And the people that are on the wrong side, they're going to be plotted. They're going to be tricked. They're going to feel deceived. But God's not deceiving them. They deceive themselves. And so that's the important thing to remember. So just wanted to clarify this because I guess uh, some of the apologetics are saying that Allah deceives. Allah says he deceives in Quran. No, that's just a misreading. I mean, even if you read a translation, it's very clear in all the cases that when it says God is planted, plotting, it's in relationship to what others are doing or what others are thinking. And that is an essential key point. Uh, if you're thinking you're going to plot against a prophet of God, or you're going to deny the truth and it's okay, or you're going to steal, or you're going to lie, and God's not watching, no. He's there. He's watching. I mean, for the people that have a problem with this, let me ask this question. Do you believe in the Day of Judgment? So, if you believe in the Day of Judgment, that means that you believe that we're going to stand before God and answer to Him? Well, do you not think people will be deceived that day? People don't think there's going to be a Day of Judgment. But when they find out, oh, well, there's a Day of Judgment, they're going to feel deceived. They're going to be deceived. If you believe in the Day of Judgment, if you believe that there is heaven and hell, then some people are going to feel deceived because they deceive themselves. I'm not talking about, if in Islam, it's not talking about people who don't know. Like a Christian who doesn't know Islam is the truth is one thing. But I'm talking about people that know. People that know and intentionally, after even knowing, hide the truth. Then they deceive themselves, and then they'll find out on the Day of Judgment the result of that deception. They were plotting, and don't think if you're plotting against God <laughs> that there's not going to be a counterplot. So, yeah, that's just how Quran teaches us. This is why we have to, you know, for Christians, God's all love. But love, you know, love is all about oneness. But God's majesty, the one who created the whole heavens, the whole of the earth, created everything. He deserves to be feared also. He deserves to be loved. But his awesomeness, this whole vast universe, all the billions of galaxies, is not even like anything before him. We're like, like less than particles of sand for him. Right? And we're arrogant against him. And if you think that being that little particle of sand and being arrogant against God, right? Uh, and there's going to be no consequences? Do you believe in consequences? If you believe in consequences, then you believe there's a plot. You believe that there's a trick, that you people will be tricked, people will be deceived. So... You know, it's just a matter of semantics. It's, a, it's an argument of semantics. But if you believe in the Day of Judgment, if you believe in heaven and, fi and the fire, and you believe that some people will have salvation and others won't, then you have to believe that there's a plot. Okay?